Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my 2000 subscriber Q&A video. I asked some of you guys to send me in some questions you might have to let you get to know me better and hopefully I can answer them all to the fullest of my ability today. So just before I get to the questions, I want to thank all of you who have subscribed. Hitting 2000 subscribers means a lot to me personally. And I also want to thank all of you that sent in a question or multiple questions. So with that said, I'm going to start answering the questions and I hope you enjoy. All right. So first off, Zenpire asked a few questions. He asked, what's your favorite game series? That is a really hard one because there's so many amazing video games out there. Because you said series in particular, um, there's a lot, but I'd have to say if I chose a shooting series, I'd choose Gears of War, especially the original trilogy. I fell in love with that. Um, I love a lot of RPGs and if I had to pick some RPGs, I'd pick two Western RPGs. Firstly, I think it's no shock that I'd pick the Elder Scrolls series. There's just nothing like that. Um, but a close second would be the Fable series for me. I actually really love the Fable games with the morality um, choices and stuff like that. I'd have to say an open world video game like Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Redemption. But I also love the Assassin's Creed series, which um, every iteration I just... I think it's something about the stealth gameplay. I really love that series, so that would be a close second. There's also a tower defense series called Kingdom Rush on iPhones and Steam that I really love. Then there's games that I loved and I would play back, you know, 10, 15 years ago. First off, Dynasty Warriors is a great hack and slash series. A bit repetitive, but I love the characters and the story in that. Then for platformers, there's Prince of Persia, the trilogy on the PS2. Those were my go-to games. I played them over and over and over again. And of course, Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo. Classic platformer series. Favorite anime YouTubers you watch? The only anime YouTuber I really watch regularly is Gigak. I watch every single one of his videos and he played a massive role in me getting to make my channel and the videos that I make today. Favorite Funko Pop you have? That's something that I've never really thought about. I own hundreds of pop vinyls and I've never really narrowed it down to my favorite one. I love my Dragon Ball Pops, that's really where it started for me, and my Gears of War Pops because that's the first time I wanted to really complete a set. I also really love my original Power Rangers Pops. I think there's seven of them all together. And when I completed them, I was so happy. And I also love the Christmas pops I have from Star Wars or Spider-Man or Nightmare Before Christmas. But if I had to pick one pop, I know which one I'd pick. I would definitely pick this metallic version of Vegeta. This is the first outfit that Vegeta wore in the series when he was first introduced as this, you know, charismatic, cocky prince. And I don't love this pop just because it's metallic. I just love his outfit. I love the little scouter, his tail around his belt. And I've always loved this old school Saiyan armor. So I'd have to go with him. What's the most you have ever spent on an anime figure or DVD? Okay, so I knew this question was coming because one of the most regular questions I get on my channel is, how much money have you spent on your collection or how much money did you spend on this figure or this pickup? And honestly, the answer is quite a bit, but not as much as you'd think. 95% of my collection I have bought on sale or pre-owned and I've really paid a fraction of the retail price. But there are a few items that I have spent a decent amount of money on. It might surprise you how much I've spent, so let me show you. The most money I've ever spent on a DVD is this complete box set of the Naruto series. And I paid around $200 for this series back just after it came out. The reason I bought this is because I wanted to start watching Naruto in its entirety. And although this is a lot of money to spend on one set, I bought this pre-owned, um, but that wasn't that far away from retail price. This is back when I was first getting into collecting and I thought this item was a really rare piece and it was pretty sought after back then, but then things get reprinted and I've seen this go for half that price now, so I overpaid, but I'm happy to have it nonetheless. The most I've ever spent on a figure, I can proudly say I've never spent over $100 on a figure. The most I spent is on this figure right here and it was $99. So this is the desktop real McCoy of Son Goku and Chi Chi on the motorbike. A tragic thing about this figure is this is the most money I've paid for any figure and this is the only figure I've ever had break on me, um, which I have glued back together, but unfortunately it broke again. But 
that's just... <laughs> well, it wasn't even me, alright? It was, um, my cat Chris went into my anime room, knocked down a bunch of heavy DVDs onto the figure that was out of its box on display, broke the handlebar off the bike, which was probably, if it was gonna break, that's the best place to break. Um, so yeah, I'll have to re-glue that, but I can't blame her. The other figure which came pretty close, maybe like $5 less than $100, um, was this Leomon figure from Digimon Tamers. Uh, but considering both of these figures retailed for almost double that, I'm, I'm happy with the purchase and yeah, I think it was a pretty good buy. What are some of your guilty pleasure anime? Um, off the top of my head, Bludgeoning Angel Dokuro-chan, Golden Boy, <laughs> Labyrinth of Flames is a funny little OVA, um, Koihime Muso, which uh, not a lot of people like, it's this weird uh, alternate take on the Three Kingdoms era based on like fighting games, but I actually love it. Another one would be World War Blue, which it, almost unanimously everyone hates that OVA, but I love it. It's about um, the video game wars between Nintendo and Sega, but all of the consoles and games are like warlords and they're like actually battling each other like Mario and Luigi are these Japanese warlords. It's crazy, but it, like everyone hates it, but I love it. Now if we're talking etchy, all right, I'd have to say Kiss Exis, Ladies vs. Butlers and How Not to Summon a Demon Lord. Ch check them out. Yuzu, I Hara, I Love Citrus, Ooh? asks, have you seen slash got Citrus? It's beautiful, you should definitely watch it. Um, no, I haven't seen or nor do I own Citrus, but maybe I'll check it out. Valia asks, have you ever played anime music quiz? I've never played that, but after you left that comment, I looked it up and it's something that I do want to check out. Maybe it'll be a future video, if it's not copyrighted music, which it probably almost is. 15 Affiliation asked a lot of questions. He says, what got you into or influenced you to watch anime? Um, the very first time I found anime, I didn't even know it was really from Japan. I started watching a morning cartoon show called Cheese TV on Channel 10, which maybe some of you are familiar with. It played a lot of anime series like Digimon, Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, Sailor Moon, Beyblade, Transformers, um, way more than that, Yu-Gi-Oh! And that was really the first time that I got introduced to some of these classic series that I love to this day. But they also played other stuff mixed in with it, so they played like Spongebob, Rugrats, like all these Nickelodeon shows. Um, so yeah, as a kid, I loved anime and I didn't really even know it. After that, apart from watching a little bit of like Dragon Ball Z, Digimon and One Piece, I didn't really watch any anime um, up until the age of about 19 actually. So just after I left school, I was kind of in this weird place where I really needed something to um, weirdly like uplift my spirits. I was kind of in this dark place and I actually recaptured my love for anime. I started watching more adult series and I kind of just dropped that stigma um, that even like honestly I thought anime wasn't really mature. But after reconnecting with it, here I am today, like crazy otaku collector. So um, yeah, it's kind of a funny story. Do you read manga? If so, favorite or top manga? Yes, I read manga. I don't read as much as I watch anime, but um, all the manga I read now is actually pretty simple manga and I read it in Japanese. So an example of that right now I'm reading Yotsubato um, because it's simple to understand. The kanji is broken down into hiragana and it's just a really fun read. Uh, the only series that I read in English now is manga that's not Japanese. So here's a Korean manhwa and this is Fantasy Degree. Um, so that's in English because I'm not gonna learn Korean. <laughs> my top manga, my favorite would have to be Full Metal Alchemist. It was the first manga I ever finished and to this day it is my favorite. A few people actually asked the same question and Valia also added to this, uh, do you stay current on chapter releases? Um, not really. Like I said, I like to read manga in physical volume so if I decide I want to read a manga, I'll check it out online first and then if I like what I see, I'll go out and buy as many volumes as I can and then I'll just smash it all out like over time, in one go, whatever. After that, I don't really stay up to date on like ongoing shonen manga or anything like that. Um, if I want to continue the manga or read like a new manga, um, I'll wait till a bunch of it is out and I'll go and grab it all and just read it all in one go. Are you a man of culture? 
Um, yes, <laughs> I like to think so. Have you read any hentai manga slash doujins? Are you a fan of any? Um, yeah, uh, I actually read more doujins than I'd say I watch hentai. My favorite doujinshi would be the Victim Girls R series. Um, a third one just came out of that and they're actually making a figure from that doujinshi series, which is wild and I can't wait for that. Do you watch hentai? Yes, I do, but like I said, I read more doujins actually. Honestly, I prefer like the 2D art in doujinshi or h-manga than hentai anime, but yeah, I've seen a few of my time, that's for sure. <laughs> Have you played any visual novels before? Um, yes I have, but most of the ones I play are like cheap online flash games. I haven't really played many like um, high profile Japanese visual novels, but some of the ones I do want to play is obviously some from the Fate universe and I do want to play Steins Gate as well. Top 10 waifu, oh my god. <laughs> That's something I've never really thought of. Obviously, if, I, if I'm put on the spot, obviously number one would be Seattle from Gotchi Usa. Number two would be Elsie from The World God Only Knows. <sighs> okay, I've, I've compiled a list here. I'm, I'm back, all right? I left for a second. Honestly, no one comes close to those first two, but if I had to do 10, Shira L. Greenwood, How Not to Summon a Demon. Number four, Ruricio from Inuex Boku SS. Number five, Yoko from Gurun Lagan. Classic. Number six, Kanetsugu from Samurai Girls. Eh? Number seven, Nymph from Heaven's Lost Property. Number eight, Yuma Nakamura from One Plus Two Equals Paradise. Probably not a lot of you have heard of this OVA series. I think it came out in the 80s, 89 perhaps? It's kind of like one of the original twin harem ecchi anime. A uh, manga, but there is an OVA and it's really freaking good. I highly recommend it. Number nine, Galco from Galco Chan. Gotta have a Gyaru in there. Get Gyaru. And finally, number 10, Kokoa from Rosario Vampire. Did you go to uni? What's your current job? Um, yes, I actually did go to university, but I only completed my first semester of a Bachelor of Teaching. I did stay for the remainder of the year, but it just wasn't really for me. I didn't really get the atmosphere and I was kind of in the zone where I just wanted to go out and work and experience things and I was just done with studying. Uh, but in terms of my current job, I own my own business doing gardening maintenance at the moment, so that's going well. <laughs> Any anime that scared you or made you question your life existence and ask existential, ex existential, existential questions, you really Tongue tying me here, Phil. Okay, that's a really deep question, um, but I'd have to say Great Teacher Onizuka really made me think about the things that are really important in life and just about having a good heart and treating others how you would like to be treated. One OVA, or it might be a movie from Hajime no Ippo, Mashiba vs Kimura, I related to that a lot. Um, just through the fear of failure, and just like working hard to wanting to succeed and just like struggling. Um, I don't know if I'm really answering the question, but this is the best way I can relate to some of the anime I've seen. There's probably a few more, like Hibernate Renmei is a really profound way of looking at the world. Um, that series was really, really deep for me. As weird as it is, Oroimo, um, it kind of, it helped me with acceptance over the things I love and not being kind of embarrassed about being like an anime fan or an otaku. But then there was also incest, so. <laughs> and finally, A Silent Voice did make me like fearful and sad on a level that I've like never felt since. And um, it just really connected with me emotionally, I guess about life could be a lot worse and you know, never take things for granted. Top five anime recommendations that you feel everyone should watch. Okay, if we're talking about generally everyone should check out these series, I have five for you. Number one, Steins Gate. Number two, Code Geass. Number three, Death Note. Number four, Chihaya Furu. That's right, Chihaya Furu. Um, watch that card game about Karata. It's really freaking good and everyone should watch it. And number five, Attack on Titan is undeniably one of the most exciting anime series for anyone to watch. Have you ever been to Japan? No, I never have been, but I really do want to go. What is your dream job? Honestly, I always had an infatuation with being a YouTuber. Um, I really just always wanted to do it since like, since 2006, I really wanted to start a YouTube channel back when I was 12 years old and YouTube was like really new. But I waited a long time to start one and um, 
I didn't really have the confidence for a long time. What I consider now to be my dream job is actually working in the collectible figure industry in one way or another. As many of you probably know, I love figures so much that it is honestly my dream to one day either own a company selling figures or making figures or just in some way be involved in that industry. I think that it's something that's really isolated to Japan. Um, with very few countries or companies in the West doing it and I really just want to kind of break into that market and kind of pursue that. So for me honestly it's working in the figure industry, whatever that takes me to. Top 3, 5 or 10 figures you want to buy. There is so many figures I want to buy, like literally thousands, but if I had to pick some off the top of my head that I'm really wanting and searching for. The first four are all gonna be of Shadow because I do not own a Shadow figure and I need one. Number one, I want the Nendoroid um, and I want it with the Good Smile Company bonus of the little rabbit. I also want her figure from Stronger. I want her figure from Funny Nights. I want her figure from Toys Works. The other figure I really want is the only official figure of Ekachi Onizuka from Great Teacher Onizuka. And that's the action figure from the year 2000, which is incredibly rare, but I would love to have that. Apart from that, I really want to own a Bishoujo figure because I don't have one. Um, that's from Kotobukiya's line. Apart from that, one of the only figures that I regret not purchasing at the time would be the Greymon and Tai figure. I was waiting for the price to come down, but it just sold out. And um, the price now is like quadruple what it was back then so I really wish I had a, just bit the bullet and bought that figure because it's an amazing piece. Tiggy T says rate my taste in anime. All right Tiggy here we go. So first off you watch a lot of popular anime. Your favorite series is the Monogatari series which I can respect. A lot of your top 20 are great shows except Clan Ad I really hate that show. Overall I'd say you watch a lot of the popular shows but you need to really expand into some of the hidden gems. My recommendation for you would be Ghost in the Shell Stand standalone complex. My mum says, you have beautiful teeth, Jack. What toothpaste do you use? Love mum. Um, well thanks mum. As you know, I had braces when I was quite young, so that probably fixed my teeth. Um, but in terms of the toothpaste I'm using, I found this. It's Colgate, so apparently I'm using that. But really, I need some Sensodyne, because I get really sensitive teeth. More so to hot things than cold things. It's kind of, kind of crazy. And finally, the Gasboid Gaming asked, where do you buy your anime slash manga DVD and Blu-rays online. Um, I really buy from anywhere and everywhere I can. I make sure they're selling official DVDs for starters. My go-to sites for Australians would be Madman, um, Hanabi, but Hanabi aren't really doing a lot these days. Then I'd go to other retailers like JB Hi-Fi or Sanity often have sales. Uh, but a lot of my collection has honestly come from eBay and I've picked a lot of it up for pretty low cost. So. I hope that helps you. Can you do videos about reviewing other people Mel and give them thought about anime they're watched and rated and might as well giving recommendation? Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do you, Gasboid. I'm gonna check your mail out. Okay, so I've literally seen none of your favorites. Your lowest anime is Welcome to the NHK, which I highly disagree with. I'd say for you, there's a lot more anime to discover, and my recommendation would be Parasite the Maxim. And that was it. I hope you guys enjoyed that um, video answering your questions, and I hope that, you know, your questions got answered. If you wanted to send in a question but didn't get a chance to, be sure to leave the question in the comment section of this video or contact me anywhere on social media and I'll be sure to either respond to you or make a video on it. And with that, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. So take it easy.